Hmm, Marcus Conti reporting. Where are we today? Where are we today? Oh boy. We are here at Ghislaine Maxwell's hearing. Her arraignment and her bail hearing. Her hearing to make bail down here in the Southern District of New York. That's the old jail right there. It's Metropolitan Correctional Center where Jeffrey Epstein was choked out. Ah, Jeffrey Epstein's last, last hurrah was in there. And now we are here to see Ghislaine Maxwell, his right-hand woman, defend herself in criminal court. Marcus Conti reporting. So uh, here we are. So, so Jeslene Maxwell, here we are again. We're back in this court thing, man. This is where we are today. That's where all the action's gonna be. It's very early in the morning. The arraignment hearing is scheduled for 1 p.m. today. Today. 1 p.m. today. So let's just get a little background, a little background, and I'll do a walkthrough, and uh, I'll show you where I am. You know where I am, because if you recall from the Epstein uh, trial, if you recall from Caesar Sayoc trial, uh, maybe El Capo, I was here a couple of times, I think. I don't remember. But we're here at the Southern District of New York where Jeslene Maxwell is scheduled to appear at 1 p.m. via video conference, confirmed. All right. So she will, not be, uh, she will not be in the house. <laughs> she will be on um, a video, video uh, conference. So well, let's take a little walk first. Take a walk. Oh, here we are. It's so lovely. So, before we, uh, before I give you the background on it, so that's uh, again, that's uh, MCU over there, that, uh, MCC, whatever, Metropolitan Correctional Center. That is the jail, 700 or so inmates, ma uh, male and female. Il Capo was held there. Jeffrey Epstein died there. And um, that's one of the entrances, 500 Pearl Street. This is the side of the building right here. And uh, I did observe some fake news out front. We'll go take a look. This is technically not the front of the building. But, but the point is, today, the best we can hope for, this is a very uneventful day, the best we can hope for is, well, I guess not the best, but the, the, the most exciting thing we could hope for would be that Jeslene Maxwell is let out on bail. Is that even possible? No. Uh, so... So again, video conference at 1 p.m. Jeslene Maxwell, 58 years old, faces six counts, six federal counts, child trafficking, criminal sexual activity, and perjury in connection with her involvement with Jeffrey Epstein. And who the hell knows who else? Right? Uh, the allegations from 1994 to 1997 involving his Manhattan uh, address on 70th Street and his home at... Uh, in New Mexico, his home in Florida. Uh, in the indictment, there's no mention of um, there's no there's no mention of in Jeslene Maxwell's indictment. There's no mention of Pedo Island, right? And the characters that uh, were there. There's also no mention of very powerful men like Bill Clinton and 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 Prince Andrew and and uh, the governor from New Mexico and. Uh, you know, and who else? And Donald Trump. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the big prize, right? There's no mention of any of those people in the indictment. The, invo the, 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 the uh, indictment, uh, again, six counts, all involving Jeffrey Epstein. Now, it is a trial, so who knows what's going to come out of it, right? Is she going to sing like a bird? That's what we want to know, right? This is not a trial right here. We're not, we're not, we're not at the trial. We're at a, a, at a hearing. A hearing, an arraignment hearing. Everybody has the right to be arraigned and heard, <laughs> and and uh, can argue for bail, right? So the prosecute prosecution is going to argue uh, that she's an extreme flight risk. Why? She's a woman. She can't fly. Uh, no, she can. F she can fly. You know why she can fly? Flight risk meaning that she's 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 a risk to to run away, right? She has, listen to this, 
This is, this is how rich people live. She has three passports from three different countries, probably including the United States. She has 15 bank accounts with balances in excess of $20 million. <laughs> so is she a flight risk? Of course, of course. She probably, she easily has a U.S. passport. She definitely has a, um, a uh, British passport because she's, she's British. And where else? Maybe Israel? Maybe Israel? Is that where she has her other passport? Uh, so, um, so, oh, here's an interesting fact too. $20 million between 2007 and 2011, $20 million moved from Epstein's account to Maxwell's account. Whoa, 20 million, that's a lot of money, right? Why was she giving 20 million dollars to Jeffrey Epstein? Or vice versa, why was, money, why was money changing hands between Epstein and Maxwell? What kind of deal did they have? What kind of deal did they have? What was going on? That's what we wanna know, right? So, so today, she's going to ask via video conference, um, again, she's being held at Metropolitan, um, where is she? She's in Brooklyn. Uh, we, we did that. She's at MDC. I just want to get the, the names right. Because MCC is over here. That's Metropolitan Correctional Center. But she's being held at Metropolitan Detention Center. That's in Brooklyn. Uh, so so there's, the, there's the difference right there. So she's in Brooklyn. We saw it. She has been moved an estimated 35 times the, the sheer incompetence of the, of the system has moved her within the facility 35 times to avoid possible assassination. Now, who in their right mind can assassinate someone in jail? You could argue, oh, uh, some prisoner, it's a, it's a badge of honor. I killed Jocelyn Maxwell, the pedophile pimp. But, but not really. Uh, the hit would be political and it would involve correctional officers, maybe even the warden, somebody high up that turns their back with it, just like Epstein, and pow, dead, choke. That, that's, huge. that's how it would happen. If it's going to happen, that's how it's going to happen. So, so they've moved her many, many times. So is she, is she more at a risk to get killed in prison, or is she more at risk uh, uh, I, I don't even know what I was going to say. Is she more of a re at risk to, to, to die in jail or to be let out and run away? <laughs> I don't know, man. Is it, is, it, is it more likely that she'll ever see a trial? Uh, will Jasleen Maxwell ever get to trial? Um, my, my guesstimation is, is absolutely not. Hold on a second. Let's walk and talk. Let's walk and talk. I don't think that Jasleen Maxwell sees the light of day because, because in the Southern District of New York, the kangaroo court that it is, she will either die or she will cop a plea. She will cop a plea. This is the front entrance of uh, SDU, uh, Southern District of New York. And you can see it's all barred off. These are people just going in. But the action's out front. We'll walk around, take, take a look. There's really no action at this point. It's a fine looking court. Oh, I forgot to, uh, I forgot to point out Lady Liberty. And people playing Badman. Let's watch Badman for a while. Oh, whoa. So here's Lady Liberty. So far, no graffiti. We're doing good. Two Lady Liberties, a pair of ladies. A pair of ladies here at Liberty. No damage thus far. We like that. Because at some point, at some point, Lady Liberty 2 will be a racist. Oh boy. They're coming for her too. That's a different story. That is a different story today. So let's go around the front. I'm just a little bumpy on, on the front side, so that's why I'm trying not to walk too much. I'm trying to walk. I'm trying to walk very, del very, very, 
I'm trying to walk without bumps because I don't have my I don't have my joystick with me. I have a different joystick. I have a different form of joy today. Oh, well, there's something interesting to look at. Uh, across the street, it's a lot of fake news. Let's look at their equipment. I love looking at fake news equipment, man. On this side, it's very stable, by the way. Look at all the equipment. Oh, damn, I love it. This is like uh, for guitar geeks, right? You look at, uh, you, look at the, you, you like the band, but you love the equipment. Ah, oh, look at the guitars they play. Look at this equipment. Woo look at that camera, man. This fucking shit is dope. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's fucking so cool. Little tripods are set up. So this is uh, 500 Pearl Street, the, the uh, entrance. And uh, let's see. Wow, look at that setup, man. Look at that rig. That right there is a rig. So Mark's got the reporting. And uh, it's fake news all over the place. So, so, um, so again, uh, prosecutors are going to argue that she is an extreme flight risk. Extreme flight risk because she has three passports and she has three passports from three different countries and twenty million dollars cash in fifteen accounts. All right. Um, again, this involvement uh, does she really matter? Let's talk about that. Does does Jasmine Maxwell in this day and age with all the with coronavirus, with with Antifa fighting off the NYPD, does she really matter anymore? Are we? Is this story dead? Do we care? Do we care about Jasmine Maxwell and her and her 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 lust of teenage girls? I guess we do if it if it brings down if it brings to to to, to question if it calls to question Bill Clinton's involvement with young girls, then damn straight it matters. If it calls to question Donald Trump's involvement with Epstein, not so much as a pedophile, but as a guy, a businessman who turns his back to the, to the, to the, the, the dysfunction of others, like Epstein, a pedophile, confirmed pedophile. So I guess the story does matter. It still, it still matters per se, right? So, um, so, oh, she's also a flight risk. I'll tell you why, because when they arrested her, and this is what they'll, this is what they'll argue. I, I'll tell you in a second. I got to get out of the sun because it's way too fucking hot. Hey, boss, how are you? It's way too hot standing out in the sun, so I'm just going to walk over here. That's criminal court, by the way. Uh, New York State Criminal Court over there. And uh, this building, I'm not really sure. Oh, this is, um, this is the state court. This is the back of the state court. That's what it is. Back of the state court. I think the, the, badminton, the badminton is the best part of this. I think this is the best part, Badman. <laughs> Looks like fun. All right, so I'm out of the sun. I am out of the sun. Wow, that's hot. So again, the um, the prosecution is going to 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 say because because when they tried to arrest Jasmine Maxwell, she slipped into a separate room. She ran away from the police. She eluded the, the police. And therefore, that action in itself is saying that she'll try to slip away. She went into another room and tried to slip away. The other piece of evidence they found was that she was trying, she had, she had been hiding for about a year and she was, her location, the way she would hide her location, allegedly she would wrap her phone in, in uh, tinfoil. I don't know if that works. Does it work to... to to, to stop uh, the traceability of a telephone, but her phones were wrapped in tinfoil. So they're going to argue, prosecutors are going to also argue that she's a flight risk because she wrapped her phones in tinfoil and, and when they tried to arrest her, she ran into a, a, a separate room. So she can't be trusted. Right? That's, how, that's what they're going to argue. Um... um 
Again, she, uh, Maxwell has repeatedly denied the charges of recruiting girls for Epstein to sexually abuse, right? So the charges are perjury, the charges are sexual and uh, c criminal sexual involvement activity and, and perjury, child trafficking, moving children from state to state. There are three witnesses to this, but the real kicker, the real kicker is, did Jeffrey Epstein have any involvement with very wealthy men? The kind that we'd like to know more about, right? Like a Bill Clinton, for example, right? Or, or a governor from New Mexico, or a prince from Charles. That's what we really want to know. All right, so let's have a look. Let's go back over here. So again, it's early in the morning, New York time. And we're here, if you're joining us late, Southern District of New York in Lower Manhattan, 500 Pearl Street. Uh, you can Google map it and find out where we are. We're downtown. We're just a few blocks away from Occupy City Hall. We're about a block away from City Hall. And there are people sleeping outside as we speak. As we speak, speaking out, sleeping outside because everybody, everybody and everyone has suddenly become a racist. <laughs> and they're going to come in and save the day with teenage girls. That's interesting. That's just an interesting thought, right? Who's more guilty of abusing teenage girls? Antifa, throwing them into the front lines, throwing them out in front of the, the kicking and the punching and the, and the spitting and the yelling, or Jeffrey Epstein, who, who gave them a lot of money for a little, you know, a little of this, right? A little, uh, a little in and out. Right? Who's abusing right now? I mean, that's kind of a crude way to put it, but I would say that Antifa's doing quite a bit of uh, uh, child abuse. Or, or, or young people abuse, right? Gaslighting the shit out of these young people. Right. So, uh, so have your final look. We'll be back, I guess, at 1 o'clock today. You could, you could follow it. I'll make the prediction. Marcus Conti will make his prediction. My prediction is that Jasleen Maxwell will be held, remanded, back to prison, where she's not even going to be here, because, again, that's another kind of a point. If she had any chances of getting out on a $5 million bail and house arrest, that's what they're trying to do. $5 million bond and house arrest. And then she could, she could sit in her, in, her, um, in her luxurious home and wait for trial and prepare for trial. Right? So, so my prediction is that that's not going to happen. What's going to happen is at 1 o'clock you're going to get a remand. There's going to be some arguments about her, her being... The flight risk that she is, more talk there, but really no discovery, no, no hearing. It's not a hearing, it's an arraignment and a bail hearing to argue bail. So that's what we could expect today. It's, it's not, it's not going to be, it, I mean, there is really no event. I mean, I don't know what the other event could be, right? Unless you want to go sit, in the, sit inside the court and listen to the video conference, which I'm not going to do, but I'm sure about two o'clock you'll hear more fake news will let out what was said. Maybe we can get an honest transcript, right? And um, and and, um, and we'll, we'll we'll have more information from there. So uh, Marcus Conti reporting from the Southern District of New York at Jasleen Maxwell's arraignment hearing and bail hearing. Peace out.